Since you asked for it, here are 25 through hiking tips in seven minutes. When you're at a bar or cafe, definitely bring these free sugar packets and add them to your evening meals. They will make them a bit tastier and they also contain a lot of free calories. Instead of bringing your large wallet, bring a Ziploc bag where you can keep all of your cards and cash. To save some space, use the same type of soap to wash yourself, your dishes, as well as your clothing. It should also be marine life friendly so that you can use it in nearby streams and lakes. Setting up your tent over here offers some sick views. But setting it up over there is better. You should build your tent in a place like this, right next to some smaller trees, because it gives you more protection against the wind, against condensation, and against thunderstorms. You should also never set up your tent underneath dead trees, on animal tracks, and right next to rivers or lakes, because you will get a lot of condensation there. Instead of a double wall freestanding tent, like I have over here, get a single wall tent because it will be much lighter. They do get a bit more condensation, but it can be dried out very quickly. My single wall tent dried out within 10 minutes every morning while I was making my coffee. In Europe, wild boars are a very big problem, so you should never cook your food right next to your tent. So instead, you should cook and eat your food at least 50 meters away from your tent, because if you leave any trace, wild animals have very good smell and they will find it. You should also have a dry sack where you put all of your food overnight and hang it up in a tree overnight at least 50 meters away from your tent. I learned this the hard way when about a dozen wild boar came to my tent in the middle of the night trying to break in and get my food. I managed to scare them away, but it definitely wasn't a fun experience. When camping in very cold weather, always put your water filter as well as all of your electronics inside of your sleeping bag overnight. If you freeze your water filter the membranes inside could break because of the water expanding and contracting and your electronics will just drain much quicker if it's very cold outside. If you're leaving stuff outside of your tent inside the vestibule you should always tie it to your tent because you don't want a fox or a wild boar coming to your tent and running away with all of your stuff. Over here I'm just using a clip that goes through the laces of my shoes and I'm tying it to my tent. Most through hikers hike with trail runners because they're lighter, they're more flexible and they dry much quicker than hiking shoes or hiking boots. If you're doing a very long through hike, don't switch between different models of trail runners. Instead, stick to the same one. Otherwise, your feet won't be used to them and you will get blisters. If you're planning to do a through hike, a good way to keep your eyes on the goal is to get a poster like this. Over a year ago, me and my girlfriend started a company called Trail Goals, and we make posters of various different hiking trails, including the PCT, the GR11, and 90 other different hiking trails. During this time, we've sold almost a thousand of these posters, and people seem to love our maps. They're offered in five different minimalistic color options, as well as several different sizes, so that you can choose a poster that best looks in your own interior. To get your poster, go to trailgoals.com and enter the code OSCARHIKES to get 10% off. And now let's get back to the video. For through hiking, you do need good quality merino wool socks. I've also tried cheaper merino wool socks like these ones, but I still got blisters with them. I would recommend getting either darn tough hiking socks, which are the most popular model, or silver light hiking socks, because these two are the ones that I don't get blisters with. Although ankle socks do look better, longer hiking socks like these ones will provide more protection for your ankles when you're walking on overgrown trails and also be warmer when you're sleeping. If you don't already own one, get a fanny pack. It distributes some of the weight over to your front instead of the back and it's also very useful for storing all the quick grab items like your phone, your wallet and anything else that you need to access very quickly. Don't attach anything heavy to the exterior of your backpack, especially not on the top or outside here in the middle. Instead, put the heaviest items inside the pack and preferably closer to your back. If you're running out of space, you can attach something lightweight to the bottom of your backpack, like your foam sleeping mat. Training for through hiking by lifting weights and running is beneficial, but it's not enough. The best thing that you can do to prepare for a through hike is go outside in the mountains with a fully packed backpack and gradually increase the miles hiked each day until you're comfortable hiking every day. You don't need to bring a full roll of toilet paper because it takes up too much space. So instead, when you're at a bar charging up all of your devices, 
just take a bit of it when you're going to the toilet. Bringing an adapter that allows you to charge all of your devices at the same time is very beneficial because at bars, cafes and campsites you'll usually get access only to one electricity outlet. Always carry an emergency blanket. You'll probably never use it in your life but if you do need it it could save your life. If you've bought a first aid kit you should go through it and remove all the items that you probably won't need. For example, chances are that you won't need 50 different bandages or 10 different disinfectant wipes. And if the kit contains scissors, chances are that your Swiss Army knife already has them. You should also add other items in there like sunscreen, lip balm, leukotape, ibuprofen. If the first aid kit comes with a pouch, you should also replace it with a Ziploc bag because it's much lighter and it's fully waterproof. When hiking, always set your phone to airplane mode. That's because when you're in a very remote area, your phone will try to understand where's the nearest cell tower and it will drain a lot of battery. Plus, the GPS will still work if the phone is in airplane mode. When hiking in the mountains, it's very common to not have any internet for one or two days. So make sure that your phone has offline maps and check the weather forecast for at least the next two days. For navigating offline, I use an app on my phone called Gaia GPS, but you can also use Locus Maps. They're both free, and when you zoom in to the place where you'll be hiking, when you're connected to the internet it will automatically download all the data so that you can use it whenever you're offline. If you're hiking on very overgrown trails that are known to have a lot of wild animals before approaching a corner like this you should always make a noise to avoid startling them because if they're startled they could attack you. But what a lot of people get wrong is that by talking to yourself or whistling a lot of animals actually don't really get scared from that. Instead, you should make loud, sudden noises. For example, before approaching this corner, I could hit my trekking poles, or I could clap my hands, or I could say, hey, and that would work much better. If you need to finish your hike quicker than expected, for example, to get back to work, you can actually walk more each day, not by walking quicker, but by taking fewer breaks and keeping them very short. To avoid shoulder pain, you have to learn how to adjust all the straps on your backpack so that most of the weight is balanced on your legs instead of your shoulders. First start by loosening all the straps on your backpack. After that, you have to tighten your hip belt. Make sure to tighten it very tightly so that it sits right on your hip bones. After that, tighten your chest sternum strap but don't tighten it too much. Next, adjust the shoulder straps, but again, not too much. And lastly, tighten the load lifters, which are these ones right here, but again, not too much. In the end, you should have a backpack that feels very tight around the hips so that your legs work more instead of your back. And the top part of your backpack should feel rather loose, but at the same time, when you're walking, it shouldn't be moving around. If you didn't already see the part one of this video, Go and check it out for another 20 through hiking tips. And if you know of any other through hiking tips that I didn't already mention in this video, please write them down in the video comments because it will be very helpful for other through hikers. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.